hi welcome back to the channel what is up um welcome to the channel if there's anyone new watching the uh, channel for the first time so if you haven't yet just scroll down a little bit click the subscribe button and then you can tune in for any videos that might be coming up soon so today i am on the turbo i don't know if you can see that just on zwift for a little bit of aerobic riding gonna be doing about 90 minutes today so it should just be quite steady um, but I want to try and go through a few questions that I've had via Instagram I put a little thing out on my story and I just wanted to get a few questions that hopefully you guys find intriguing or interesting and then there's a couple of questions I've had already that I've already decided I'm gonna do like a whole video on so I'll go through a couple of them and explain why I'm gonna do a full video on them. Okay, so a couple of the questions I've had um, that I won't go through today, but I just mentioned them quickly. We'll, uh, the first one is, uh, am I racing Challenge Wales? Um, we'll talk about it in the next video. Uh, the second one was a little bit around my, my goals, short term, long term, so like this season, and then like my goals in triathlon as well. Um, again, I think that's probably a bigger video, so I'll try and dive into that in the next few weeks. Um, and then one of the other questions is how long I've been doing triathlon. So yeah, good questions. Uh, I'm probably gonna do separate videos on all of them. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for them if you wanna find out any of that information. Okay, so first question, do I wear my swimming goggles under my hat or over my hat? Um, there's only really one answer to that, it's always under the hat. Um, spent many years swimming and if your hat ever starts coming off, you want to be able to just basically pull it off, um, especially in like a long distance open water race. So if you've got your goggles over the hat and it starts like bubbling up, you're kind of stuffed. Um, so yeah, goggles under hat always. If you lose a hat, you know, open water, worst case scenario is you get a cold head. So yeah, goggles under hat. Okay, so next question was, do I take solid foods on, on the bike during a race? Um, in short, mainly no um in an iron man i might take like one bar on in the first like hour but for the most part i normally just do uh electrolyte and, and sort of carb mix um all provided by com fuel um i've been using more 10 and ph tablets recently and then a few more 10 gels so that kind of works for me and then another question i've got is do I stick to a strict nutrition plan? Um, I'd love to say yes, but in all honesty, I kind of have a, a diet, which I think is on the whole, not too bad. I do eat a lot of food, um, but now it's kind of based on how much you're training. So if you're training three, four, five hours a day, you've kind of got to replace those calories that you burn. So. I'd say on the whole I have a decent diet, I don't have a strict diet, I definitely like chocolate, um, so yeah, no, not a strict diet. Okay, so turbo done and actually I'm now in my shed, as you may be able to see, uh, just to answer a few more questions before I end this week's video, quite short and sweet this week, um, so the next question I had was, top recovery tips uh, to keep training hard and consistent? Um, I think this is a hard one, it's different for everyone. I think some people some people need to get more sleep, some people need to eat better nutrition, um, some people just need to know how to progressively overload the training without you know jumping too quickly. Um, but I think the biggest one for me is definitely the sleep aspect. Uh, it's something I probably get wrong sometimes as well. So yeah, no, definitely definitely the sleep side of things. Um, you know, eight hours a day is is great if you can get that. I know around work and and life and family and stuff, it can get pretty tough. Um, but you know, eight hours average across a week. Uh, if you can bank a couple of extra hours at the weekend, uh, yeah, I definitely would would get that in. Uh, next question I had was, <laughs> what's your perfect Sunday? That's pretty uh, <laughs> pretty varied. I think most of my Sundays include a long run early doors, um, get out, get the shoes on, 
uh, get your long run ticked off. And then other things I like to do on a Sunday are spend some time with my fiance Emily. Um, sometimes go for like a walk over the Gower, uh, coastal parts on the beaches. Um, and then sometimes a little ride and a roast dinner. Um, and if the weather's pretty bad, possibly just a day on the sofa watching Netflix. So yeah, pretty, pretty chilled Sundays normally, um, unless, you know, traveling, racing, that sort of stuff. So the final question I'm gonna do on today's uh, video, yeah, before I'm gonna actually do my run, so I'm just warming up with a little bit of a walk. Um, final one I'm gonna do is um, about pacing over the three disciplines, so swim, bike, and run. Do I stick to speeds, heart rate, power, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, so pretty straightforward for the swim, I go by feel. Um, I've got quite a good gauge when you're kind of redlining a little bit and going into that kind of uh, lactate above threshold kind of intensity, you can kind of feel your arms and legs kind of fill. So normally it's about just getting to that point on the opening, trying to drop it down, recover, and then try and find like that really nice rhythm where everything feels quite light and easy, um, but you're still pushing the best you can. Um, on bike, it's very much power. So I have a power target for a race, but also power and speed. So average speed, the faster the average speed is, the faster you go. Um, but also knowing what my capabilities are on power. Um, and then run tends to be just pace. Pace and perceived exertion, I think. Some courses with some inclines and stuff, you know, pace goes out the window a little bit, but you can kind of always feel if you're going hard enough or not. The problem I have with heart rate while racing is that it varies so much. So you get out the swim and you get on your bike. So Ironman Wales in 2019 was a good example. You jumped on your bike, my heart rate was 180. Um, so you, you kind of got to appreciate there's going to be the points in the race where the heart rate does go up, up and down. Um, so on the bike, for example, you know, I kind of know what power will give me what kind of heart rate. Uh, so normally I'd be around like 150s, like an Ironman leg. Um, and then the same sort of thing on the run, like 150, 160 for the run. But I don't ever cap myself based on heart rate. I just kind of use that internal gauge of how do I feel? How hard is this effort out of 10 or out of 20? Um, and then also, yeah, what the speed, what the power, what the pace is saying. Um, cool. Anyway, a few little questions. And I've actually really appreciated some of the other questions I've got, which have given me some really good ideas for videos coming forward. So I mentioned a couple of them at the beginning. Um, I've had a few more since then. So I've got a few weeks now where hopefully I might address some of those questions. You know, it gives me a really good topic to chat to you guys about. So anyway, that's enough uh, chat for now. I'm gonna get this run done. Cheers.